Q1 ladies and gents uh, this video is a good look on the inside of the quad 22 and we're going to have a look at the inside of the uh, control unit and have a look at its tubes and we're going to look at its tuner uh, which is two tuners and uh, we're going to look at its uh, power amp we're only going to look at one of the power amps and we're only going to look at one of the tuners because the, the tuners will be identical and the power amps of course will be identical okay and um, and we're also uh, going to listen to this Ariston uh, um, SL record deck it's uh, an RD110 and all of this has come from my uncle Paul who's had to pay a fortune for it <laughs> uh, but um I'll uh, I'll show you how you set your counter balance up. Um, it's been in storage as this machine for a couple of weeks here, and I, I should today. It's um, it's uh, you know there you go. Not far off twenty past, or should I say quarter past four, in Saturday afternoon, and I should be doing my mate Sean's radio today. I've already had a day on it Sean, I've already had one day on your radio and I am not happy with it Sean, I'm not happy with it uh, and sometimes it's a good idea to come out of the workshop and, and do something different, it really is, I'm not trying to make excuses, it is I've had that radio today listening to it stateside and I'm not 100% I'm not happy with it it's not, uh, it's not yet, it's not yet a Stalker 9 FDX and don't worry, Sean, I'm not going to charge you anything for repairing that radio, because there is no repair. Uh, I'm not going to charge you anything, so don't worry, Sean. I'll just want you to pay for it post back to you, that's all, old mate. So, uh, uh, but I'll definitely get it back to you, Sean, this week, uh, or should I say, uh, by the end of this week. I'll have that radio back to you. Um, anyway, uh, so I thought, um, while I've got my head on that, on that radio of Sean's because I'm still studying um, I've come out of the workshop and I've decided to pull this out I've just had my dinner and I'm going to give it a right good clean okay because it's all it's all dusty uh, Paul, my uncle Paul's had them sat around up top of land in there and I, I take it that uh, you know with dust on them you know they've been sat for a while I've tested them like they sound really really sweet in fact these are probably the bestest amplifiers I have in the house no doubt about that <laughs> uh, I have some other tube stuff but I reckon these at best obviously so um, so what I'll do is uh, I'll just move this out of way and then we'll open this uh, preamp up and we'll open one of power amps up because there's something in there I forgot to show you you know when I said that uh, the other valve amps have got switchable impedances? Well, I remember, uh, you see, I've owned a pair of Quad 22s before, and I remember that these also have the same. These are switchable impedances, but you have to solder a wire, I believe. You have to move wires around. Um, um, I think different tappings on the audio transformer there. And uh, so I need to open them up then because I'd like to know what they're actually set to now. I want them to be set to 8 ohm, you see. Uh, but I think that they do go down to 3 or 4 ohm. And I think they go up to 15 ohm. But I'm not too sure. We'll have a look at that. And um, so I'll uh, I'll just move this Ariston. And uh, and then, like I say, I'll show you how you, uh, how you balance one of these uh, arms. It wears a ton at the moment because it doesn't have its counterweight on. <laughs> uh, known as its counterbalance. Um, this is its uh, marker, which I'm just turning around. You know, uh, that would be a nightmare if you didn't know how to set it up just by moving that. But uh, don't worry, they're, they're really easy to set up once you know how to do them. Um... I have a friend of mine round the corner who's a proper hi-fi man. <laughs> this, by the way, is made in Scotland. Uh, this is an Ariston, like I say, it's an Ariston turntable. And it's hand-built in Scotland. Oh, you might not be able to see from my filthy magnifying glass here. Um, I'd be better like that. But, uh, yeah, they're hand-built in Scotland. And um, <coughs> Scotland make uh, one of the finest turntables known to man in England. Um can't really call it England really can you because I think they're just about to leave us 
I don't really blame Scotland for leaving us neither with way our MPs are treating everybody. Uh, it's the MPs that want prosecuting. Anyway, um, uh, like I say, this is an unbuilt turntable and of really good quality. But it's no LP12, but it's, they're not too far off. And loads of people will slag me off saying, oh, it should be on a proper turntable stand that's balanced. Well, I have one, folks. I really do have a proper, a proper, uh, I think they call them a Tagra, a Tagra turntable stand. And it's all balanced and locked, but I can't find its little balancing pins, you know, that sit underneath. I've put them down somewhere and I don't know where they are. So I'm just going to just, I'm just going to run that just a year on this. <laughs> Because uh, I just want to see how cartridge matches up to, to preamp, you know. Um, I, I do believe it's moving magnet is that cartridge. Uh, and uh, and yet he can take moving magnet and moving coil. So uh, so I'll just be interested to see roughly what it sounds like. It'll give me a rough idea. Okay, so we'll move to the preamp first. Uh, okay. Q2. Right, we're looking at the uh, the underside now of the uh, preamp, and uh, these here that you see here were just um, uh, extra attachments that you could buy for it. You know, um, they're just extra adapters that you can buy for it for different uh, you know inputs. This is pickup, so that's for that'll be record. Uh, you know, a bit moving magnet uh, adapter or something like that, and um, it'd probably just be a transformer of some description. Right now, um, uh, looking at it, um, all I can see that's been changed is its main, is its main capacitor. It looks like it's had a new one at some point. Um, these are all the uh, tuner inputs here, right? notice how you've got all these different colors well um, you plug you know these different tuners you see you've got uh, either a two tuner system for stereo two separate tuners like I have here or you can have just the one tuner in stereo um, or you know and um, so all of these are for uh, they're for different tuners you know and your, your lineup is uh, two EWC83s and two EF86s, two EF86s, and it's this cap here, I believe, has uh, has been changed at some point. This one here, which will bit uh, you can see from mains coming in there. It's the uh, the main filter. Ah, they're a lovely thing, you know. I felt really lovely made. That's the balance underneath there. Right? Can you just see it moving? And this is off and on and volume. And then, of course, you've got your bass and treble. Uh, defeat, defeat noted where where you see where it says level. Them two positions there would be what we call defeat, i.e. no bass or treble added. And them other two guys are filters. And this is just the switching arrangement, you know. And um, you can see that in uh, in the day, you know, we really, Britain, we really, really did make good quality stuff. And I've said it a hundred thousand times, why, if there's such a demand for this sort of stuff, why don't we just go back to making it? It just seems crazy to me. I just can't understand why we just don't go back to making it, if there's such a massive demand. Anyway, I'll leave the lid off, because uh, when we wake it up, we'll, uh, we'll wake it up with its lids off. So I'll go get a tuner now. Q3, and we're back again. That's uh, after you slide it out of the cabinet. Um, um, you then uh, you then have to move this uh, shielding plate here that keeps all these tank areas uh, perfectly screened. Look at the beautiful wiring box! I tell you, it's just beautiful. It really is, you know. I tell you. Uh, 1963 1963 that makes it folks the exact same age as me aye not far off 51 well 51 and uh, to think that they were it let me just look at you know you know how this wire here not a wire of course it's a rod but how it goes through this little rubber grommet 
You know, it's just beautiful. It really is. It's just stunning. Straight down to the valve. It's just gorgeous, folks. Right. It's a work of art, folks. It's a work of art. Really, well, they're, a work, they're absolute work of art. And I don't know what the uh, lineup is. There's quite a few tubes in here. You know, there's one here. A uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's one down there. Seven tubes in just a mono tuner. Uh, so there's uh, there must be some stages going ahead. And uh, I think this is its aerial input here. I think that's its uh, aerial input point. Um, I'm only guessing because it could be it's... Uh, can't really sell with them being the same colour. Yeah, I would imagine it is. Oh, I would imagine it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, I tell you what I know because... Uh, the uh, that, that that's uh, not that's the audio out by the way. Not the not the aerial in on these is on the side. That's its aerial in there, right? So uh, so what that is that's audio out uh, going to the one RCA because this is a mono tuner. You see, uh, you couple both of them up together to get your stereo, and the other uh, pin is there. One will be high tension, one will be low tension, and one will be ground. Uh, going on to that other big block of wires there, which is uh, which is Bill there. Four, four, but they'll, they'll probably only be using three. I'm only guessing like, there might be one that we haven't seen, but it looks like there's only four coming out of there. Uh, sorry, three. And uh, I would imagine that uh, that's how it is. Uh, something else. I mean, you know, some of these caps and what have you, you know, they're as old as me, folks, and I'm buggered today, <laughs> and this is still working spot on, <laughs> right, let's move on to a quad 22 power amp then, okay, Q4, and now we're in the, uh, the power supply and the power amplifier, because, uh, the two power amps deliver the powers to the other guys both of them and um, so we got uh, mains comes in here and then um, after it's after it goes through power supply and all this all these are just chokes filtering what quality proper quality chokes are them out there and there's no uh, worrying what's doing what there because it tells you all look, that's your need to supply five volts whatever it uses five volts for and then your HT you know and of course there are all your mains tappings coming in with your main selector here right if you can see and um, and of course you've got your main transformer I always thought this were a uh, choke but I think it is as well I think I think that is a choke as well or uh, I think it's a choke uh, in conjunction with uh, better here you know, and uh, this is your rectifier tube here, and uh, these are your two finals, and uh, and these are two EF86s. So you've got two EF86s and two KT66s at this time, and uh, and then uh, this multiplug here, which is uh, what drives the uh, what drives the preamps. And then the the tuners get their supply from the preamp, you know. Ah, right. beautiful thing, absolutely beautiful. I'm looking forward to giving them a good clean up. Uh. <laughs> hey, you are beautiful. You are love. It's what comes out of them that floats my boat, folks. I mean, uh, you can always tell the F eighty six if they have a right funny uh, grid on them or whatever, don't they? Uh, I must have had millions of them when I was a kid, you know, where have they all gone? I can remember as a kid throwing them at wall, you know, for laugh, just to listen to them go pop. Ah, you can slag me off, 
don't have to slag me off as much as my conscience slags me off. I, I was listening to you, John, the other day, or reading your mail when you said you were getting that box of owls out of out of lot. <laughs> Talk about cry for you. Uh, and he, he, he were getting a box of valves out of his loft, folks, that he'd saved for 20 odd years. And uh, and, as he, and he had them all layered up in layers with uh, cloths in between them to protect them. And as he were getting them out of the loft, uh, hot, hot, hot box slipped over and fell. Loads of them went on to landing and rolled downstairs and he says they were breaking as they were falling. He says about 50% of valves died. <laughs> he says, when I look on internet now, he says I'm devastated when I see prices that they go for. Ah, these are 100 quid a piece, by the way. In fact, for a matched pair like they'll be, they can command much more than £100 a piece, simply because they're a match set. And same as EF86s, these are not just willy-nilly put in, these are a match set. So we have a match set of EF86s, because they've both got to work at roughly the same gain, you see, and uh, same here. And, uh, and of course, it's same on Bill, you know... Um, you know, and it's just ludicrous money, you know, for what they are. I mean, I, I agree, because of the audio that comes out of them, they really do sound like they're worth that money, but why can't we start making them again? Why can't we just start making them again? I, I just can't get my head around it, why? You know, all them quality engineers, you know, and uh, all them skills that they must have had, you know... I mean, uh, they're wired just a little bit different to a Cobra 148, don't you think, folks? You know, it's just beautiful, they really are, they're absolute, and they're, they're logical, they're easy to understand for an electrician that might have to do any work on them, you know, he can, he can follow cables, he can follow stuff. Uh, and, and, and if them resistors and what have you were made in 1963, well that's, that tells you a little bit about the quality of the components. You can, you can buy resistors and capacitors today that don't last a year, you know. So uh, we've definitely gone wrong road, haven't we? Shall we make it make some noise? I've only got some crap speakers in here. I've got some really nice speakers, but I just can't get to them now. And we'll get it to make some noise, I think that's a good idea. Uh, I'll set it up and then I'll get this record deck behind me calibrated a little bit and uh, we'll put some analogue uh, into it. I don't know what, like, I've, I've hundreds of vinyls knocking about so uh, I'll find some, I don't know what. I'll find, I'll try and find something obscure uh, hoping that uh, YouTube doesn't recognise it because everything I play they recognise it. Ah, copyright, copyright, ah. <laughs> So I'll have to try and find something that they don't recognise, alright? Just before I do, I've, uh, I've just pulled its fuse out to have a look what it were rated at. 2 amp. Mains, 2 amp. Mmm. All of that lot, you know what I mean? That's what I say, you see. In one of my videos there where I was talking about the valves running on high power, or on high voltage, they do. But they don't want that much current demand. There's not that much current. And remember, that'll be rated when it's working its, working its balls off at high volume, you know. And yet only 2 amp from the mains, which is quite considerable, I know. But uh, it's still quite good, isn't it, for something 1963. Uh, okay. <laughs> you see, we all make mistakes, folks. And I make only 689. Um that's not a capacitor at all, that's a volume control, <laughs> I can't believe it, this is cap here, yeah but it just looks like a capacitor doesn't it, but it ain't, and uh, what they are, they're to, uh, they're to, uh, they're to stop spike when you turn it on, you know, when you turn it on, so, <coughs> excuse me, so they shrouded this one with a little bit of sleeving because it's so close to casing of the CWC83 and they, they don't need to do with the other one because it's miles away and uh, that's all that is, I'm sorry about that, it's a volume control and an on and off switch but really well screened uh, right so uh, I've got the uh, power amps together you can see I haven't cleaned them yet uh, but I, I, like I say, I will do. I'm just putting them back together now, and we're going to uh, wake them up and have a listen to them. And uh, testing copyright material does 
does the, do, do YouTube recognize the music I'm going to play now? Charlie Oscar, if you're watching this, do you remember? Do you remember Oscar when we were talking about eBay? Oh, I might be going back five, six years now, Oscar, if you remember. And uh, and we were talking about how you can buy anything on the eBay, anything. You know, right down to a little cartridge, it doesn't matter what you want, you know, you can just find it. You might have to pay a fortune for it, but you can find it. And uh, and I said, I, I can remember Oscar testing you with your searchability, you know, you just can find out good Oscar. And I said, all right then, Oscar, see if you can find a record on the fashion label, and the record's called I Really Got To Get You by Al Campbell. And uh, and it's a record I adored when I was a kid. Never came in our charts. And uh, and I adored it when I was a kid. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry for all you hi-fi people. I know, just like you know, that this is not set up correctly at all. Um, but it's the first time I'm hearing this record. Uh, this come from my Uncle Paul's as well. And I had to pay good money for all of it, you know. Um, and eventually I want to see all this in my music room. Uh, so, um, so um, it's got a moving magnet cartridge on at this time, uh, but I do believe a friend of mine's got a, uh, a moving coil he's going to sell me cheap. Anyway, uh, how you set it up roughly is um, is uh, you get your counterbalance and you turn it until you get to zero, right? And um, you should also put the anti-skate device. Let me just turn drive off. Right, and you put your anti-skate device to zero or off. Okay, and then what you do then is um, you lift the arm up. Right, you lift the arm up, and you see that it comes to an absolute zero balance. As you can see, it's not there yet. In other words, the arm needs to weigh nothing. Absolutely nothing. So we'll just give it a bit less. You can see it's gone higher, has it? It's hard for you to see, isn't it? This is a Lin arm, by the way, folks. It's a Lin Basic. Known as a Lin Basic Plus. And I've had them before. You see, when it goes to zero, it needs to be flush, absolutely flush. So we need a bit more weight on there. To get it to zero. We're very nearly there now. We're very nearly there, what they call a zero point. In other words, the arm weighs nothing. Right? Then what you do, you check that your, your point's on zero. I'll just lock the arm back up again into its pivot. And then this this other counterweight, you leave the counterweight now where it is and you set that to dead zero. And then you put your weight on. And in my case, I'm going to run it at about, about 1.7 gram. Okay, that's about 1.7 gram there, right? And uh, you also match that with your anti-skate device. If for those that don't know what that is, <coughs> you know, uh, you've got you've got a continuous track that goes from the edge all the way in uh, but the arm needs to sit uh, into the into the center of the, that part now one part of the track is obviously pulling the arm inwards so we have what we call an anti-skate device where it slightly pulls it back at an exact amount so that then we get left and right stereo perfect Right, that's basically the idea. So I've got about 1.7 on anti-skate, about 1.7 here. Another good thing to do, right, is to turn the record deck before you turn it on. And that's because if it being belt drive, it just takes that bump out at motor as well as drive, right? And uh, and we'll lift this lock off. Let's see whether YouTube recognises this. <laughs> Gotta get ya, oh gosh. Hey 
again. Nice record there, that Paul. Very open. I love the way you walk. I love to hear you talk. I love to see you smile. I'm gonna get your love. One of these times, I'm gonna get you, baby. Get another we shot. Really want you. I'm gonna get you, baby. I really, really need you. I've got to get you loving one way or another. Oh gosh, it's no use running or hiding or calling. <laughs> it's no use you running, running or hiding or calling your big brother. It's no good. <laughs> I'm gonna get you, baby. I really, really need you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Do I? Oh, Lord, yeah. Baby, when you pass me by. Oh, Cupid, shoot your arrow, please. In this young girl, art for me. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna get, get you, you baby. baby. I really, really want you. I'm gonna get you, baby. All original, lot, folks. I really, really need you. Including the clicks and the scratches. <laughs> Brings back analog days. Last record deck I had were an Addiston RD80 and that what they call an RD80 SL and it's made in Scotland by the way this hand built in Scotland I think I said earlier didn't I and, uh, and they make some, some of the finest record decks they really do All my friends say I'm a fool because I've got this love for you but I don't care just what they say I'm gonna love you the same old way I'm gonna get you baby I really really need you I'm gonna get you baby I really really want you I love the way you walk I love to hear you talk I love to see you smile I'm gonna get your loving one of this time I'm gonna get you baby I really really want you baby I'm gonna get you baby I really really need you baby You'd think that'd move in with record, wouldn't you? I've never bothered with one of them ever, me. But it's already got it on. Yeah, it does move in, whoops. Or is it not? Must be that front part that uh, gets some tread, you know. I really, really love you, baby. Ah, that's the Ariston. RD110. I were a DJ then. Hey girl, I'm really gonna get you. Yes, yeah, definitely oh moving in. Hey girl, 
By the way, Paul, I love a million different types of music. Some people are quite certain that I just like reggae music. That is not true at all. I like everything from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. And plus, I swear that's true. My music collection is absolutely vast. Fleetwood Mac, The Doors, Buddy Holly. You know, I'm telling you, really, we've got everything. We really have got everything here. Uh, uh, music's just as important as the iPad that you're playing it on, in my opinion. I just wanted to share that, because all that I seem to play is reggae, you know. But. Really gonna get you, baby. I really, really want you. I'm gonna get you, baby. I really, really need you. Young girls, hot for me. I'm gonna get I don't know what our rest of lineup is. I really, really want you. I'm gonna get you, baby. Really beautifully, mad folks. I really, really need you. Really nice one, mad. 75 ohm input. Is that an audio technica? I'm not sure whether that's an audio technica cartridge. All my friends say I'm a fool. Because By the way, I've got um but I I've asked the iFi man, I said, you know, once I find them pins for my record deck stand. I think you know, you know, you you'll have seen them those professionals out there. Um, and you can balance the stand on the floor that it sits on and then when you put the deck on <laughs> once you've gone through all spirit level and what have you and then when you put your deck on then you know you just make sure that your plinth is all balanced correct now my mate my mate the iPi man he's going to come round and do that for me and, uh, and I can assure you you know I'm going to try and film him doing it he will spend three hours doing that I'm telling you, they'll spend three hours setting that deck up for me, you know. All for a cup of tea and a curry. <laughs> do you want me to buy you curry tonight, Beasel? I'll do that. Oh, no, he'll do all for the curry, will my mate. Yeah, it's definitely moving, look. And uh, if you were to pick that up, you'll probably find some... Uh, some grub and rubbish underneath it, you know. I mean, I, I tell you what, folks, I really, really... That is the bestest sounding amplifier I have in the house. Ah, it really is. There's something else of them, folks. Them KT66s. Phew. Aye. Anyway, I best get out of here. What more can I show you, really? There's no point in coupling tuner up, you know, this... Uh, I've no aerial... Uh, I've no aerial just to hand here, you know. Besides, I can't see it sounding as good as a, an Ariston record deck, can you? We've heard children anyway before, haven't we? Ah. You know what always amazed me, me folks, when I was a kid? Is how the whole thing's stereo, but yet there's only one cantilever. You know, that's what they call, the, if I can get some light in here, can I bring some light in here better? Oops, it is. So I can get this, uh... You see, you see, uh... See where needle comes down there? Well, that's... That's obviously to one point. And that, that little piece coming back up, they, they call it the cantilever. And what always amazed me when I was a kid is, how does it split up two separate channels, left and right? from one cantilever 
Well, I can't go into it now, but I know now, you know. But when I was a kid, I used to think, wow, that's just amazing. <laughs> Another thing about reggae music, folks, is if you buy 12 inch, you always get the dub version. You know, you get the uh, you get the uh, normal seven inch version what they made, and then dub version. And, and on some occasions, like if you do a flip round, you might just get the music. So that if you want to make your own version of it, not that I will. Right? Okay, catch you later. That's a look inside the quad 22 preamp and tuner and power amp set with an S on the end. Goodbye folks, and I'm gone now.